I'm Kim Nace. I'm the executive director and co-founder of the Rich Earth Institute, uh, located here in Brattleboro, Vermont. Rich Earth Institute started in 2012. Uh, we're a nonprofit organization, and we are dedicated to taking what is normally a waste and turning it into a resource. Human urine is an excellent fertilizer, and uh, historically, in many different places, people have used it. Uh, as a fertilizer, but in our current way of managing human waste, that's not what happens. My name is Abe Noe Hayes. I'm the research director here at the Rich Earth Institute, and I've um, been here since the beginning, since 2012, working on, um, on how to recycle urine into something useful. Um, the reason that we do this is because currently, when we flush urine down the drain, there are a lot of, um, a lot of plant nutrients in urine, like nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, magnesium, zinc, iron, all the, all the vital elements are in urine. And when we flush them down the drain, a lot of them end up in rivers and in lakes and in Long Island Sound. And once they get there, they become plant fertilizer for algae that live in the water that actually shouldn't be there um, in at high levels. So that fertilizer fertilizes algae that, gl that grows, makes shade, it dies, absorbs oxygen, kills fish, causes environmental damage. That's one issue with flushing urine down the drain. We have a vision for a different way of handling it. Instead of flushing it, we want to collect it, and then we want to use that, that fertilizer value where it's needed, which is on farms. Our initial uh, work started with 60 volunteers and 600 gallons in the summer of 2012, and here we are in 2020 recycling over 10,000 gallons a year of urine uh, to our local farms. We're very proud of this project. It's a demonstration project as well as a research platform. So we have four participating farms, and we recently I received a new grant to add five more new farm partners to trial our urine-derived fertilizer product on five new crops and to um, also do some more research about drip irrigation uh, and fertilizing at the same time. That's called fertigation. At this point in time, Rich Earth is really the only uh, full cycle urine nutrient recovery project in the United States. Uh, we hope that that's not the situation for long. We feel like we are uh, setting an example and uh, putting together uh, a process that other people can replicate in other places. We do have colleagues all over the country and actually all over the world. There's a lot of activity in France, there's a lot of activity in Switzerland and in Europe, uh, in South Africa, in Australia. There are projects going on all over the world and I think that if we're lucky, you know, this is going to reach a tipping point and we're going to all be able to see urine nutrient recovery happening at scale in many places around the world. That's a great vision for all of us. So we have this program that is throughout the town of Brattleboro and the neighboring region, surrounding region, where we've been collecting about 10,000 gallons of urine per year. We bring it all to our, our central location, the research center, where I am right now, and we pasteurize it here in case there are any germs in it. So we collect it from hundreds of people. And then we supply it to farmers. We have, uh, I think, about four farm partners now, give or take, who uh, we bring it to in our big yellow pea truck. We, bring them a thousand gallons of treated urine at a time, and then they use that as fertilizer for mostly growing hay. Um, and so by doing this, we are preventing pollution, preventing these nutrients in urine from being water pollution, and creating sustainable fertilizer that supports local farms. And, um, and so that's our flagship program. We call it the Urine Nutrient Reclamation Program, and that's what we've been doing since 2012. We have permits from the state of Vermont to process the urine, and we're we're working on, um, on putting in permitted installations in buildings where we have urine diverting toilets like these, like these ones behind me, some of these, this one's urine diverting, the front part of the bowl uh, it has a separate drain so urine goes in there through a tube to a tank. So we're getting permits to put some of these in homes and businesses and, um, and start moving it more toward the mainstream of a, you know, a classic porcelain looking toilet but it has this, this ecological function of diverting the urine. So that's the um, that's the, the nuts and bolts of what we do. Um, but then the bigger picture behind that is that because we are collecting urine on a community scale, thousands of gallons per year, and treating it and bringing it to farms and growing plants, we have this opportunity to have a research platform. So we're the only organization um, in the country that, that collects urine on the community scale like this in a public way. And so that's given us the chance to do a lot of research on uh, on the, the effectiveness of urine as a fertilizer. It's an effective replacement for synthetic fertilizer, it turns out. We've also been looking at the uh, pharmaceuticals in urine. There are some pharmaceuticals from medicines we take that are in our pee, and we've had a chance to do some field trials on farms 
looking at, um, at how much of those pharmaceuticals end up in the soil, in plant tissue, in crops, or in the water underneath the field. Turns out very little, fortunately. Uh, it seems like it's a much better approach than flushing them into the river, essentially, which is what we do now um, as a society. And then it's also given us a chance to research um, urine treatment equipment. So we have our pasteurizer. A lot of people use urine at home without pasteurizing because they know that it's clean, clean pure urine from, from their own household, but we have urine from everywhere, and so we pasteurize that. We're also working on ways to concentrate urine because it um, takes up a lot of volume. You produce about 125 gallons of urine per year, and we're working on technologies using freeze-thaw process to shrink that down to be a much smaller volume, maybe 30 gallons or so of urine per year, with the vision that someday we'll have urine collection and concentration in throughout cities, and then that concentrated fertilizer will be sent out on trains or trucks to farms, and we can have this renewable cycle where um, people, people eat food, make urine, the nutrients in the urine go back to farms, are used to produce more crops that then can become animal feed or people food, and we can just keep those nutrients cycling around instead of having them bleeding off constantly into our, into our delicate um, um, ecosystems. Rich Earth Institute really sees its work as uh, part of the bigger picture of all of us fighting against climate change and the transformation that we need to make to live more closely to the, the Earth and to the nutrient cycles that we have disrupted so dramatically. Uh, we have algal blooms and we have a lot of waste and a lot of um, you know, pollution in our waterways and some of this is coming from human urine. So if we can transform it and make it a resource and put it back into the soil, into the land and grow things, uh, that's exactly where it needs to go in order for us to live sustainably. So there's kind of two pathways for our peace cycle. One is this big community scale pathway that we've created here in Brattleboro. And the other is the home scale pathway that anyone can do anywhere. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. So the first step is to find a good way to collect the urine. This is the Cubian funnel system that Rich Earth has developed um, that we have available for people in our region. And then the next step is this question about whether or not you need to sanitize the urine. Um, and basically, it depends on whether or not you're planning on sharing the produce with people outside of your family or if you're gathering a urine source that's wider than the people who are gonna be eating the produce, if that makes sense. Um, and this is based off of World Health Organization guidelines. Um, so essentially, if you're not planning on sharing your garden harvest, it's, uh, sanitation is not, sanitization is not a requirement because you know, you're not gonna get yourself sick with something you don't have, really. Like it's, it's your own body. Um, and so there you just, wash your hands and follow all the best practice guidelines. And um, an additional uh, recommendation is that you should wait around 30 days after fertilizing to harvest your crops. Um, if you're gonna be eating them raw, like lettuce or something like that. Um, but if you want to share your produce with others, um, we do recommend that you find a way to sanitize it. And the easiest way to do that is to just store it in an airtight container at around 68 degrees Fahrenheit for about six months or longer. Um, the other way to sanitize it, which we do with our community scale urine at Rich Earth is through the pasteurization process, which is a heat time um, process. And we're working on developing a home scale pasteurizer that people could use if they wanted to go that route. So then there's a question about how do I reduce the odor? And the easiest way to do that is by adding one to two cups of vinegar per five gallon container. When should you fertilize your crops? Um, basically, it varies crop to crop when they're in the stage that is actively taking up the most nitrogen. Um, and this graph is kind of a helpful way to visualize where nitrogen uptake is the, is the greatest for, for example, corn. Um, basically, it's older than a seedling and younger than a mature plant um, whenever it's actively growing and producing leaves and shoots and things like that. How much you apply kind of depends on a number of factors, including um, how much nitrogen is already in your soil, how much uh, nitrogen the specific plants that you're growing need. And um, so you can do a soil test to kind of help figure out some of those things. But we do have a sort of general rule of thumb, which is about one gallon of urine per 100 square feet 
um, every couple of weeks is kind of a basic guideline. Um, and you can also just kind of pay attention to your plants and uh, notice when they're showing signs of nitrogen deficiency with uh, yellowy looking leaves or um, un unusually slow growth. Um, but it's important to note uh, to be careful not to over apply the nutrients because then you are just contributing to the nutrient pollution problem that you were trying to prevent from happening. Um, and it can also be harmful to your plants. So the actual method for application, we recommend wearing gloves or washing your hands um, afterwards. Um, and then the most important thing is to apply it directly to the ground so that there's no um, ammonia volatilization where you are losing the nitrogen value. So pour it from your like watering can, for example, um, as close to the ground as possible. And then the pattern in which you apply it kind of depends on how and what you're growing. So if you're growing annual plants, we recommend about four inches from the base of the plant. For row crops, you can make a, a strip or a shallow furrow next to the row. Um, we're growing corn and we, in rows and we kind of made a zigzag between the corn um, like in a shallow ditch and then you pour the urine in and cover it over with moist soil. Um, or if you have more sparsely planted uh, plants, you can just make a shallow hole next to each plant to um, apply in. And then for trees, we recommend applying it in a circle around the tree that's around the same diameter as the um, canopy of the tree, which is a really great way of estimating where the roots of the tree are growing. And then uh, you want to make sure that you're incorporating the urine into moist soil and that there are a number of different ways to do this. One is to just cover it with moist soil ap after applying, which is works well for the shallow hole kind of ditch application method. Um, another is to just water your garden immediately after applying. And the third is to dilute the urine before application. So if you go the dilution route, it really depends how much you want to dilute. The urine really depends on how dry your, your garden is to begin with. Um, we hear everything from one to one urine to water ratios to one to 30. Um, but generally the kind of recommended ratio is one to three or one to five. And then the final kind of question we get a lot is, or we hear a lot that people are just peeing into their compost piles, <laughs> which is great if your compost pile has a really high carbon content. Um, but if your compost pile is mostly kitchen scraps or green plant material, then you're actually losing a lot of the nitrogen value of the urine. Um, so whether or not this is a like good way to actually increase the kind of fertilizer value of your compost depends on what is in your compost. And then if you do this, um, we are encouraging everyone to document their experiences in their garden. Um, we have this little Google form that's also on our website called You're in My Garden. Um, and we're especially interested in getting this form from people in the Connecticut River watershed or in the Long Island Sound watershed because it's really helpful for the Long Island Sound um, study folks to know how many people are diverting nutrients from the watershed through this practice. 